With phase 3 in full swing, it's time to start collecting your base pieces in order to pound those logs in Sunken Temple. In this video, we'll briefly go over our pre biz setup as well as a full best in slot list with gear you should aim to have before the end of the phase. With that said, hunters in this phase have both the advantage and disadvantage, depending on how you're looking at it, of having their pre biz and full biz performing somewhat similarly. By having full best in slot, you only gain about a 60 DPS upgrade, assuming you have all buffs and world buffs compared to the pre biz set. Another thing to note is that spell power was significantly nerfed in phase 3 due to Blizzard fixing the double dipping interaction Serpent Sting had with Chimera Shot. And as such, we use way less spell power than we would in phase 2. Alright, let's take a look at the previous list. Here is a snapshot overview of the gear we will be using in our previous set. If you watched my previous previous video, then there are a few items that differ now that we were given new dungeon loot and now that spell power no longer scales as well. A few of the items on this list are very expensive and are unobtainable by most. But for those items, we'll go over alternatives in the next section. I've linked to the previous list in the description so that you have something to refer back to. Alright then, let's take a look at the full best in slot set. Here is an overview of all of the items that will provide you with the most damage possible. Some are easier than others to obtain. So I'll go over each item along with alternatives and situational items whenever applicable. Starting off with the helmet, where we will go for our phase 2 option, namely Glowing Neuralink Cowl. If the helmet is on cooldown, which thus far in Sunken Temple is quite rare, then the rank 7 PvP helmet comes out on top. We'll make sure to slap on an 8 agility enchant through a lesser arcanum of veracity. For our neck, we want to go with the Bloodstained Charm of Valor. This is just a 2 attack power upgrade over the Gnomorgan option, which also gives you 6 stamina. So I wouldn't worry too much about upgrading the slot unless you're missing the phase 2 neck. For our shoulder slot, we want to go with the Leatherworking Crafted Shoulders. Those are only slightly better than this rank 7 PvP shoulders, and if you have access to neither, the Trog Slayer's Pauldrons from Gnomorgan is only about 10 DPS behind the best option. For the shoulder enchant, it is really a toss up between the attack power and spell power version, but for most people I would go with the attack power version since spell power gets the most value when you execute your rotation perfectly or play with lone wolf. For our cloak, we'll have three options that are basically equivalent. Two BOE cloaks that cost a few hundred gold each on the auction house, and panther fur cloak in the new sunken temple raid. Even the 14 agility BOE options are very expensive. But there is a 14 agility cloak that is very easily farmable from High Interrogator Gerston from BRD. The cloak we enchant with 3 agility. For our chest, we want to go with the tier option. Until then, get Knight Shane's armor, Fungus Shroud armor, or Blaze Wind breastplates until we get our hands on a token. The chest we enchant with plus 3 all stats. For our bracers, we'll run with Forest Talker's bracers from Exalted with Warzone Gulch or Void Powered Slayer's Vambraces if you're engineering. The difference is only one agility, so unless the crafting materials get a lot cheaper, I would not worry about crafting it. Now that you can get 1000 reputation per day with the Ashenvale event quest being daily, the Exalted Bracers are rather easy to get, and you may as well have it done before the next phase. For our Bracers, we unfortunately haven't had any new agility enchant for the last two phases, so we're still rocking plus one agility. There's always the possibility of running plus 7 stamina if you PvP a lot. For our gloves, if the fight is shorter than 2 minutes, you'll run Void Touch Leather Gloves. And if it's longer, you'll run Foul Smelling Fighter Gloves. Sergeant Major's Chain Gauntlets is another alternative which seems about the same as the Sunken Temple Gloves. So if you rank 5 in PvP, then this is a rather easy pickup. These should be the go-to gloves if you get 6% hit from other pieces in your gear. For the enchants, we run plus 7 agility. In the weight slot, we'll in most cases run Sagebrush Girdle. But if you're running engineering, the phase 2 belt comes out slightly on top if you're running with the PvP gloves instead of the hit option. The Sagebrush Girdle you can get from a quest in Mara. For legs, we'll run with the tier option. Until then, you'll most realistically run Nimble Trip Run and Dungeries. But if you're like myself and manage to snipe a plus 25 agility BOE for 16 gold, then that will be your best in slot until you get your tier. 
As with the helmet, we slap on a plus 8 agility enchant once we get our bits. For our boots, we'll want to run, unsurprisingly, with the tier option. Until then, our best option will be albino croc scale boots, which are rather easy to get. Alternatively, you can get the Fleetwood Greaves, which are also very farmable. For a quick upgrade over the Phase 2 option, you can also buy the PvP boots if you are rank 5. For the enchant, we want to run with plus 7 agility. Some people swear by minor speed, and that will be a good option for people looking to speedrun, but for the majority of people, our goal is to stand still as much as possible, and thus plus 7 agility will be our best option. For our rings, we'll always want to run with Mason's Fraternity Ring. In the other slot, we want to go with Drake Claw Band of the Stalker. In cases where we have more than 6% hit, we'll want to swap the Sunken Temple Ring for an off agility ring, as it will come out on top when we don't need the hit. For our trinkets, we'll want to go with Breath of the Beast and Dark Moon Card Decay. If you have over 6% hits, or if the fight is shorter than 1 minute, we'll swap Breath of the Beast with Devil Star's Eye. There's also potential for opening the fight with Devil Star Trinket and then feign that swapping to another trinket. But that is often not worth it unless there is downtime in the encounter. Horde also have access to the Rune of the Guard Captain, which is a decent previous option if you cannot afford the Dark Moon Trinket. Now for the melee weapons. This is where I see the most confusion among the player base. As of right now, and probably for the foreseeable future, unless melee weaving becomes a thing, We'll want to run with Sentinel's Blade and Rib Splitter of Agility as our pure best in slot option. But since Rib Splitter is realistically not obtainable, we'll have to look for another option. Our best option after the Rib Splitter is Corpse Harvester of Agility. After that, the Inventor's Focal Sword is performing as well as a plus 9 Agility BOE is, even after the spell power nerfs, so pick up whatever you can get your hands on. Technically, the Epic Dagger from Shade of Veronicus is better, but if you take that over a rogue, then there is a special place in hell reserved for you. Even after the spell power nerfs, using two one-handers with two lesser wizard oils over the best two-handed option still comes out on top by quite a big margin. We'll want to enchant both weapons with plus 15 agility. They are incredibly expensive at the moment, but there is no alternative available. For our ranged weapon, we'll want to pick up the Dreadstalker's Hunting Bow from Sunken Temple. But until then, the STV option is not more than a few DPS behind. We'll use the plus 7 damage scope on our bow. I'll make more videos as new Hunter metas emerge, as well as how to optimize our DPS in a rating setting. So if you're interested in that, make sure to subscribe. But that's all for now. Thank you very much for watching. Until next time.